studios in Inwood, Manhattan, Cheesehead TV brings you two guys who like to think they know something about football! Hi, and welcome to Packer Transplants. I'm Corey. And this is Aaron. And today, we'll celebrate the fact that the Bears still really, really suck. Indeed. (laughs) So let's get started. And where do we get started but the good, the bad, and the ugly? We got the good. We got Aaron Rodgers. A game of redemption. Ryan Grant. The man. A.J. Hawk. Making it in the middle. We got the bad. We got Tremont Williams. Tremont, every third down, really? Al Harris. He of the five-yard automatic first down penalty. Kenny Petway. Can he turn the corner on the pass rush? And we got the ugly. We got the Bears. And they're pretty ugly. And they are very ugly. And, ladies and gentlemen, let it be known that they still suck. Yes, they do. Oh, Although I'm, I'm very happy that Lovey Smith finally got his first loss at Lambeau Field. It's oh. been a long time coming. I mean, four years in a row? Really? And yeah. finally... Finally, beaten love at Lambo. You gotta love that. You you really do. Well, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the video podcast our, here at Cheesehead TV. Our, our initial inaugural. Uh, and if you are listening to the podcast at the moment, head to the website. That's true. Come on over. Well, we're we're going to have a. If you're listening to the audio podcast right now. You got to wait till the afternoon to see the video podcast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so something to look forward to. It's good. And they're both going to be different. The audio podcast is going to be longer and the video podcast is going to be short and sweet. And we're going to talk about the running game right now. That's which, right. Which uh, you got to admit was a shock. I it, mean, the week before the Bears allowed 20 yards to the Tennessee Titans who do nothing but run the ball all day. Uh, and then the Packers come in and put up 200 yards. I, I that I mean it was pretty ridiculous. The I whole like game th- was ridiculous. Thirty-seven three. I mean that's ridiculous. That's I mean, ridiculous. I like to think I know something about football, as yeah. we say in our intro. <laughs> uh, but you like I, there's to think. no way on earth I I think or anyone expected two hundred yards. No to get thrown up against the Bears. I'm just excited that our running game, fi- you know, after uh, Ryan Grant's agent decided to hose us, and then, Ugh. you know, let's hold out, and then let's get injured, and then... You know, and that's the thing. Like, coming into the season, this is the team we thought we were going to see. It's true. Uh, from week one. And here we are, starting at zero. And Well, we're back to, uh, you know, all the three of the teams that matter in the NFC North are all tied <laughs> uh, for first place. Well, one is 0-10. And the other one that? is 0-10, which we won't even mention their name because that's ridiculous. Um, but so, yeah, six games to go. Uh, and, hey, this offensive line coming to play, yeah. finally gelling. Finally. Um, and Ryan Grant, you can't say enough about the performance against the Bears. I mean, when he ripped off that, uh, what, it was like 30 yard 35 yarder, yeah. Uh, it, like third play of the game, you knew it was going to be a big day for Ryan Grant. This week in the Packer Blogosphere! Welcome to this week in the Packer blogosphere, <laughs> and we got a uh, a minor oh. blog battle that you tried to start, but it didn't really uh, it didn't catch, catch fire, fire. No, between uh, no. Packers Lounge and uh, Railbird Central. I did, you know, Packers Lounge directly after the game. Everyone's feeling good, and they decide to pick a fight with the venerable Railbird Central. Well, in my opinion, it. ever since uh, Railbird Central moved to uh, the bubbler. The bubbler, <laughs> sports bubbler. Uh, right. It's not as venerable, in my honest opinion. I, they, they, he, Brian has kind of started over, but you, why do you got to pick on, on on Railbird? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess uh, Pac-1 has something to say for himself, and you can check out Packers Lounge if you want to really get into the meat of the battle. But we just thought it was interesting, uh, this young upstart calling out the old venerable uh, blog. Another thing that's uh, interesting is Packer Geeks. Packer Geeks. Talking about the Cowboys. Okay, it's called Packer Geeks. Thanks for playing. So why are you doing this monster post <laughs> after the Monday night Cowboy game? E- really? Not so much. Like, they do that a lot over there at Packer Geeks. They really do. They need to stick to the Packers. Yeah, or whoever the Packers might be playing. It's true, and the Packers happen to be playing the Saints. Who are not the ain'ts of old. No, they're not. They no. have the number one passing offense in the NFL. Yes, and 
with Reggie Bush or without Reggie Bush, they're a very dangerous team. They are. And I will say that they probably have the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I mean, there, yeah, there are lots of guys who may be more talented. But right now, Drew Brees is playing lights out football. I mean, ridiculous. Uh, and he'll have his hands full with this nickel defense. Yeah. That, ladies and gentlemen, let it be heard right now. I am admitting that Corey was correct when he called it over a month ago. The nickel defense is now the calling card, the base defense for the Packers. Well, when you have people like... Um, uh, Tremont Williams. Well, I was going to say, when you have defensive linemen like we've had go out, right? you know, just one after the other, Yeah, it's kind of hard. You lose Corey Williams early in the season. Right. Well, you don't lose him, but you trade him. Right. And then you lose uh, Colin Jenkins. Colin Jenkins, that's huge. I mean, you don't really have a choice but to put Put it on your secondary. Put it on your secondary, which they've done. Put it on your linebackers. AJ Hawk in the middle. We're gonna see a. We're gonna we're gonna learn more about AJ Hawk than we did against the Bears. Oh, tenfold. Well, well, what will be interesting is it's a quandary. If Bush plays, if he doesn't, it's a whole nother game. But if Bush plays, do they? How do they choose to cover him? Actually, when they came up to Lambeau. Uh, Bush's rookie year, mm-hmm. Hawk covered him uh, mm. from his weak side position. Yeah, I don't want Hawk covering no, him. No, I want Chiller covering <laughs> Hawk. Uh, the problem becomes then if Chiller, I'm sorry, Chiller to cover Bush, but then if Chiller takes Bush, Shockey, Colston, I mean, these are real weapons. Yeah, I'm not afraid of Jeremy Shockey, sorry. I'm not, but I am. Yeah, you know? I, I, mean, I he's think a, he's a pass catching tight end. Which has given Bob Sanders fits. I'm no Bob Sanders. No. But I think he should just mano right. Charles Woodson, Reggie Bush, if Reggie Bush plays. Well, we I just do think that. that's. Yeah. Well, if they're in the nickel anyway, you know, Woodson's in the slot. And the only guy right on our team to- that can cover Reggie Bush in every situation from a check down to, right, to a, a fly. out to a flat, right, right, right. all of them, Charles Woodson's fast enough and he's got the skill. <laughs> <laughs> he does indeed well it should be a great matchup definitely uh, on Monday night well that's it for this week's show we hope you enjoyed the latest installment of Packer Transplants please tell your fellow Packer fans about us and visit us at cheeseheadtv.com cheeseheadtv.com